Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today we are back on the Hermitcraft server. It is episode 65 and we are currently over at the commercial district in the new Hermit Town. And the reason that we are over here is because of this. If you missed the last episode of Hermitcraft, you are going to be wondering, what on earth is that giant and horrific looking sign? Well, it points down to my new wheat shop. I have set up a competition store next to Exuma and we are going to be competing in terms of selling wheat. Now that is all well and good, except as Exuma has pointed out on my shop by placing down these signs, I don't actually have any wheat available right now. So what I'm going to do is head over to our new fandangled wheat room and do some harvesting, gather up some wheat. I'll do a little time lapse while I talk over it because I do have a few things to discuss, so let's begin. The thing that I really wanted to mention, the, the, the thing that has been on my mind for the past couple of days ever since episode 64 of Hermitcraft was released was the fact that some of you don't seem to understand that Hermitcraft is a server full of friends. We are all good friends, okay? So when I built that rival wheat shop, it wasn't me being horrible to Exuma. It wasn't me going, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ruin Exuma's business and I'm gonna put him out of business. He's gonna have no diamonds, no one's gonna like him and no one's gonna shop there. Hopefully he starves and dies. I, that's not what I was thinking in the slightest. And some of you went absolutely mental in the comment section. I couldn't understand it. Hopefully, if I do remember, I will put a couple of the comments on the screen so that you can read them because honestly, I would consider them to be slightly comical. People were going mad and that they were obviously saying they were going to unsubscribe. They were saying that I was being mean and that nobody on the server should ever talk to me because I'm just such an ass. And it was it was quite funny because the thing is is that everyone on Hymetcraft is really good friends with one another. And I actually mentioned to Exuma, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to just start up a wheat shop without telling him because he might be a little bit annoyed by that. So instead, I sent him a message before I started building. And I was like, look, I plan on building a competitive wheat shop. I want to start up a rivalry between me and you, and the chances are I'm going to build a giant sign. And he sort of chuckled away, and he was like, that sounds like a great idea. That will be really good fun. The only person I didn't think of was King Daddy DMAC. I hadn't thought about the fact that my sign might potentially cover up his sign, but then afterwards I was like, look, sorry, I've built a giant sign and it slightly covers up your sign. And he was like, look, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. There are tons of signs in the commercial district and it's bound to get covered up at some point. So there are no worries there. Nobody is angry at one another. The only people that seem to be getting angry are the ones in the comment section. And this is something that really did confuse me and it concerned me a little bit because there was a lot of anger, okay? So don't worry, guys. All of us are friends. Exuma is happy. King Daddy DMAC is happy. I'm happy because I'm going to be stealing loads of diamonds off Exuma, which makes me extremely happy. So yeah, don't worry about it. Everything's fine and dandy. It's all roses, no hate. All good. So after that little farming session there, we are now up to a stack and a half of hay bales, which is more than enough. I am very happy with that. And basically the way that we are going to be running this business, just like Exuma, is when a customer pays, they will put in an order with a renamed diamond or something like that, and then I will hand deliver the wheat to their base. That is probably the best way of doing it because that means that number one, they get a nice personalized service, and number two, it means that I don't have to have tons of wheat in that chest. I can just farm it when an order is put in place. So here are my signs, 35 hay bales for one diamond. If name begins with X, then it is 10 diamonds per hay bale. That has sorted out that problem of Exuma buying all my stock. Place your payment here, wheat will be delivered. So that is nice and easy. People will put their diamonds in this chest and then I'll take a look at them and head back over to my place, pick up my wheat and drop it off at their base. Absolutely perfect. We are now back over at my base looking up to the sky because this is what our next project is going to be. We are going to be fixing up the mob spawner. For those of you who don't know, this has been out of action for the past couple of episodes because it was just causing far too much lag. I couldn't handle it. Every time I left the base, it would just have massive lag spikes. And it basically meant that if I left my base, Minecraft was unplayable for around about five to 10 minutes. And I thought it was just me, but it turns out that a bunch of hermits had been over to my base and they had had the same problem. So it wasn't me, it was in fact my mob spawner. And now that we have turned it off, all of those lag spikes are now completely gone. So, 
What we need to do is we need to create an on or off switch. And what I was originally thinking is we could do some kind of wireless redstone thing working from the bottom of the base. We have a little lever, we flick it, and then the mob spawner comes on. And that would have worked really nicely, but the receiver for wireless redstone relies on a comparator clock, and that would probably start up a whole bunch of lag, and it would have to be on all of the time. And basically, I don't want that. So what we are going to do instead is we're going to go right the way up to the very top platform. You can't actually see it from here, but there is another platform above the mob spawner, and we're going to create a cool sort of uh, wireless redstone receiver and sender. So it should be a little bit of fun. So I'm going to head up there and let you know my plans. Now I'm going to attempt to do a little bit of explanation here, so hold on to your socks because this might get a little bit rough, but here we go. Basically up there we have got ourselves a dropper, and that is full to the brim with items. And next to that dropper we have got ourselves a button, when a player hits that button, an item will be shot out into the tube, and hopefully, and I'm going to emphasize that word hopefully, it will fall somewhere inside this hopper. And that means that we can take ourselves a redstone output from there, run it into some pistons, and basically create an on or off switch using almost wireless redstone. Now that is the plan. No clue whether or not it is going to work, but that is the fun of Minecraft, not knowing, I guess you could say. So the monostable circuit, we're going to be using the normal piston type one and the reason that we need this one tick pulse coming out of the monostable circuit is because it is going to run into those pistons which will then act as latches either on or off so when it is in that state it is off because as you can see there is redstone line running through into it but there is no redstone output whereas this one over here this one is currently on redstone running in redstone power running out so that is quite nice and easy to understand hopefully you got that one so right we need to take a repeater output from our monostable circuit and we just need to run it into the pistons it really is that easy when a piston is hit by a one tick pulse it essentially spits out its block and that is really really useful i can't remember when they introduced that but it was it was definitely a very good addition to the game i think it was another one of those fixes that was trying to get rid of sand generators i mean moyang have really had a large number of problems with sand generators over the time of Minecraft. Every time they added in pistons or changed something to do with pistons, people would come up with a new way to duplicate sand and they have always removed it. And I was never really that bothered about sand generators. I don't know about you guys, but I don't consider them to be that cheaty. I know that now that we have anvils and they can occasionally be duplicated, that is, uh, that blurs the line a little bit because Anvils are very expensive, but sand, I'm fine with that. I am absolutely fine with that. So, Moyang, if you're watching this, don't bother about sand generators. I quite like them. But anyway, I believe we are all linked up. So now, I am going to try and, well, it looks like I'm going to fail. But I need to try and get over to this redstone line so that I can change the state of our pistons here. Because at the minute, they are in the wrong state. But it looks like I really have cluttered up the place. Okay, so here we go. So this piston is on. And for good measure, we will make this one on as well. And then we'll hop ourselves back up here and throw an item into the hopper. So let's give this a go when we throw an item in. Okay, that was very quick, wasn't it? So it looks like, yes, this piston has spat out its block, and hopefully the other piston has spat out its block as well. I can't really see, but I'm going to assume that it has. Yes, yes it has. So this is very good. This works. Our receiver is in full working order. Now all I have to do is turn our redstone clock back on, and we'll be good to go. I don't know if you can see this, but by the look of things, a lot of the floors on my mob spawner have broken, probably due to lag. So what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to go to, into each one of these dispensers and refill it with water, which could be just a little bit annoying. But oh well, I'm going to get to work on it, and hopefully by the end of this we will have a fully functional, awesome mob spawner. Let's go. Holy Moses, that took the best part of an hour. Wow, I had not expected such a little mundane task like that to take so long, but yeah, refilling dispensers filled with tons and tons and tons of water buckets really did take quite a long time, which was a little bit odd, but yes, now the mob spawner, the mumbo jumbo mob spawner is back up and running. It is, it is working like a charm. Look, you can see 
All of the mobs are now flowing out of it, but the best part about this new redesign is the fact that we can turn it off or on again, and that means that it shouldn't come with the crazy lag spikes that you get when you leave the area. But now that that is done, we are going to be moving on with something else. We're not here to stick around. We are all about the progress, so let's go. I have just been taking a look at this room, just taking a look around, and I realised that really, this cow farm is absolutely rubbish, and I don't want to make another cow farm, okay? We have got a perfectly good cow farm over at the new spawn. It is better than anything I could possibly build, so really, there's no point in me trying to do that. So instead, I want you to go down into the comments section and suggest what you think I should do in this room. I really would love to know, because... I don't know, there's plenty of space available, room for expansion, and it could be something really awesome. But now, what we are going to be doing is we are going to head over to the new fishing town. I know most of you hate that place, but don't worry, we aren't going to be doing any building. I've actually got a redstone project planned. I want to create some street lamps that turn on when it gets dark. Now, we'll probably do a third-person time-lapse of this one, so let's head over there and get to work. Our redstone lamps are in place they are connected through miles upon miles of redstone repeaters redstone torches everything it is all connected up and I love it they look like Christmas lights when you turn it on when the Sun goes down all of these lights will do a thing but you may notice that it is currently daytime and all of our lights are on and that is because currently they are all switched on by a lever. But our daylight sensor is going to be going out the back here. I did originally have one in place, but I broke it so that I could test it. And then by the look of things, I've allowed it to despawn. So nice one, Ollie. That's gone successfully because those things are very expensive and they use quartz. And I've only got about five pieces of quartz now. So that was really stupid. Now, it was incredibly stupid, but oh well, um, I was going to place down the daylight sensor, but it would appear that it has gone missing. So now I'm going to have to go back to my base, craft one up, and get it all ready. But as you can see, and as you probably saw from that time lapse there, these things are working like a charm, and they are such a lovely little detail to add to a base. And I think, I reckon I am going to end up doing this 
over at the Mumbo Jumbo Jungle. But I'm not going to be doing that in today's episode. We've left a bit of a pitfall here because we have got a few other things planned and I will get onto those in a little bit. Just as a very quick heads up, I put the daylight sensor in place and that all worked and also talking about things that work, the switch that I made earlier to turn our mob spawner off and on again actually works brilliantly well, which let's be honest, I wasn't really expecting. But what you may notice right now is that once again, we are running low on redstone. We have used almost nine stacks in the past two weeks and I thought that how about we do another one of those hour-long mining challenges, partly because they are really, really great fun, and also I like getting you guys involved. I want you to suggest how many items you think I'm going to get, how many diamonds, how many pieces of redstone, how many pieces of coal, how many pieces of lapis, how many pieces of gold I can get and also emeralds, okay? So all of those things, I want you to go down to the comment section and tell me how much you think I'm going to get. And also, I would highly suggest you go into your own Minecraft world, put up a stopwatch, set it to an hour, and try it yourself. See how many items you can get because I want you to compete with me, try and beat my scores. Now, I remember last time I got somewhere in the region of like 100 diamonds. It was absolutely mental. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to top that but I thought it would be a good bit of fun for the end of this episode. So yeah, I'm going to get my mining boots on and let's begin. I'll be honest, that wasn't really my best mining session. I've definitely had better ones. The last one that I did using this technique was absolutely wicked. And I know a lot of you are saying, oh, stop being so old fashioned, just do the old beacon, clear out a massive area. But I don't really like doing that. I, I really like the relaxation of strip mining, going out, finding caves. I don't like going underground and clearing out absolutely massive areas of stone and things. I don't know why. I'm old fashioned. Leave me alone. But anyway, let's take a look at the things that I managed to get. I managed to get half a stack of diamonds. That is the important thing. It's not quite the 85 that we managed last time, but it is still pretty good. And also we got ourselves tons of redstone, a bunch of lapis, um, a little bit of coal, I guess you could say, and quite a bit of gold as well. So I am going to dump that into all of my chests. In fact, I'm quite amazed at how many our sort of diamond to coal ratio there is absolutely through the roof. So that's all right. But if we take a look at our supplies here, yeah, we are really racking those up. That is looking pretty sweet. And if we head over to our redstone, hopefully that has all been replenished now so we continue 
can continue doing these uh, redstone projects because I have been doing a bunch of redstone projects recently and that is probably why I have run out. But anyway, over to the lapis. That is the last thing that we've got to put in the chest and also the gold. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for for today, folks. So if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo. And I'm out. I'll see you later.